Good morning. We are so happy to have you here this morning. Um, welcome to Ignite. This is Bring Your Own Buddy Sunday. So I see we have some new faces in here, but also some people from the second service. So we really appreciate you coming this morning. Um, we really hope you enjoy the service. Um, will you stand in a prayer with me before we begin our worship here at Central Trinity? Dear Heavenly Father, we are just so blessed to be in your house today. Let us come together this morning in worship and praises to lift you high. We are so thankful today for those who brought a buddy, and we're so thankful to be seeing them today. And bless those people and bless the people they brought. That today they be touched in your presence and in your spirit. Be with us uh, today throughout today's service that all of our thoughts and prayers are heard and put through you, Lord. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. And in your name we pray. Amen. to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones, and I tried with all my might, but I just can't win the fight, I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond, and just when I Savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name, forever free, I am not the same, I thank the master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen, got no choice but to believe, my doubts are burning. Like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends. Burden and bitterness, you can just keep it moving. No, you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way. I thank the Savior because he healed my heart. He changed my name forever free. I am not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. We 
are so excited to have you guys here this morning and welcome to Central Trinity if you're new and whether you're a member here or not, make sure you grabbed your donut today. So as you leave, if you did not get one, or if you did get one, please grab one because we have a ton. And also if you're new here, make sure you grabbed your gift outside and you signed in. There is a free little gift if you, um, um, if this is your first time here, right out at the welcome table. Just a few announcements this morning. The Music Ministry Choir Kickoff Potluck is today at 11.30. Following the second worship service, choir members, spouses, or anyone interested in joining choir are invited. There'll be hot foods provided. You are welcome to bring a side dish or dessert. So if you're interested in choir, um, Michael, Olivia, and myself have all been a part of it. So if you have any questions, you can ask us. Michael is making mac and cheese. It is his first time making it. So if it is bad, um, well, sorry. Um, uh, Children's Choir begins next Sunday, September 3rd at 9.30 in the choir room. I'm going to go ahead and announce this. This is our theme for today was BYOB Sunday. Next uh, month on September 7th, Ignite will be bringing back some old hymns. It's going to be a tried and true Sunday. So we hope to... See you there. There'll be some guest performers, hymns, and just to share a love of worship together. That is all the announcements we have this morning. I do want to say a thank you to Michael. He made these new stands for um, the banners up here. So they're not just um, hymnals that are holding it up. Shh, that was not happening. Well, now we have these little stands up here. So those look great. Thank you, Michael. And we do have Hannah up here. Hannah is uh, Michael and I's friend that we brought back. You've seen her perform here a few times. Um, we're going to sing one song, and then she's going to do a little bit of a solo herself. So we're really excited to hear that. So let's move on to our next song, Michael. You can go build a mighty mansion. But with no family, all that house just goes to waste. You can fix a feast to feed an army. But with no friends, there's no need to celebrate. Back in the beginning, there were two in the garden. No, we were never made to be alone. People need, people need, people. To the Father, there's nothing better when the kids all come together. People need, people need, people need, people. When there's nothing but love between us, we can finally start to see what God knows. People need, people need, people need, people. People need, people need, people need, people. Cause you know love is just like water. It's no secret, we all need it to survive. Whoa, you won't last long without your brother. Cause when you fall, need people to the father there's nothing better when the kids all come together people need people need people need people when there's nothing but love between us we can finally start to see what god knows people need people need people need people People need, people need, people need people. The weak need the strong, and the strong need the weak. We've all got something missing, and we're all the missing piece. The strong need the weak, and the weak need the strong. We're all searching for an answer that's been here all along. People. People need, people need, people need people. To the Father, there's nothing better when the kids all come together. You know the words by now. People need, people need, people need people. When there's nothing but love between us, we can finally start to see what God knows. People need, people need, people 
Pastor X went up to say a little word this morning. We're sharing microphones. Uh, it's so good to see everybody here and uh, praising the Lord this morning. We got a beautiful day outside and uh, a lot of you in here, and we're looking forward to sharing in some singing. And if you had a coffee, uh, you're welcome to bring one on in. If you haven't done that, you can go grab one. Uh, sing along with us. And I want to say also th thanks uh, to them back there because yesterday uh, at the um, Putnam Jam Fest, uh, they performed there. Uh, it was supposed to be from 4 to 4.30, but it ended up being... 4.30 to 5, because the people before us were just a little bit longer than they were supposed to be, but uh, we had a good time being there. Uh, I just kind of said a few words in a prayer, but they did all, well, actually, Olivia did the prayer, so, uh, but they, they did a great job singing there, and there was some, uh, quite a few people there, and we, we enjoyed it, and we'll probably go back next year, so uh, I wanted to say thanks to them for taking time out of their day on Saturday. Will you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much this morning that, that we can be here with you and be uh, sharing and worship together and sharing and fellowship together. Just ask that you uh, be with each person here this morning, be with uh, those of our buddies that are here with us, and uh, thank you that they're here and a part of church with us, because um, each of us is the church. We, we are your church, Father, and uh, can't have church without uh, each person being your hands and feet. We just give this morning to you, and we thank you for this time of singing and of prayer and uh, of, of hearing your word, and just watch over each of us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can go ahead and take a seat. Um, Hannah and Michael are going to do a little bit of a solo together, um, mostly Hannah. Michael's just playing the bass. Um, if you don't know, me and Hannah went to um, high school together. We also went to college together. She's, a, this is, she's on our last year at Muskingum University, majoring in music. So she's going to do a little bit of a solo today, and we hope you enjoy. Of the goodness of 
goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so So we pray, God, today that you uh, watch over us and you guide us through this service. You uh, give us listening ears to hear your uh, prayer today, and we hope uh, your prayer and your words go through us and live with us. So I'll invite Pastor Axman up. handoff and all kinds of things going on there. Well, <clears throat> we've been talking um, the last few weeks, and I thank you so much, Hannah, for singing that. Uh, I really enjoy that song, and Michael for playing along, too, wherever he went. I think he went to the back. Uh, but we've been talking the last few weeks about the Lord's Prayer and uh, what it means to us and how it means to share in it together day in and day out. Uh, and one thing that we talked about last week was is how important and great it would be to actually say it as a continuous prayer uh, each day. And the reason that we talked about that is because of the last part of the Lord's Prayer. And we talked last week that uh, the ending for thine is the kingdom and the glory forever amen, is actually a doxology. And it was, if you remember right, last week I told, told you that it was, if you weren't here, that's okay, I'm giving a little background so you can understand. Uh, that doxology, actually, if you look in Scripture, uh, it's not included. The verses that get included with the Lord's Prayer uh, don't have that one in there. So it's, it's our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And last week, we talked about for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And we talked about how most uh, versions, in fact, the original version, did not include that final statement because what it was was something that the uh, Hebrew, the Jewish people, said as an ending to that prayer. Uh, it was a form of praise. And actually, it's something uh, as a doxology that they used that they uh, shouted it. So it was like uh, a rise in voice and it was deliver us from evil, and then it was for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we talked about how in the church, when we say the Lord's Prayer, it becomes kind of monotonous. It's like, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And there's a rhythm to it. And we talked about that rhythm. And there's a madness and a reasoning behind that ending, too, as well. Forever. Amen the importance, uh, and what that means uh, as well. There was a psalm. I was going to see if I could real fast pull up uh, the lyrics. Anybody remember um, oh, of course. When I pull it up, it doesn't. There we go. 
there was a song that uh, uh, Randy Travis made a uh, long, long time ago. You know it? Okay. Uh, it was a while ago, and I was getting thrown off because apparently Drake made some kind of song off of that, and so that was what was popping up, and he's like a Canadian rapper, and that was not something that I wanted to read. Uh, so, but Forever Amen was a song that Randy Travis made, and it was a, a song of love that he wrote, but it it actually, the the chorus of it, uh, can really be used for uh, church. And Randy Travis was also a religious fellow. But the chorus was, uh, I was made to love you. It's all I really know for sure. I'm wrapped up in you. You're the center of my world. You see how you could use that as a double meaning? Uh, and I was made to love you from my beginning to my end. And you'll be my forever, my forever Amen. And if you remember the song, again, those of you that are a little younger, except for Olivia or any of the country people in here, you might not know. But he actually, what he says is, amen, 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 over and over and over and over again, right? Forever and ever, amen. And uh, the reason that he does that is because the meaning behind amen. There is so much to that very simple little word. Four-letter word, right? When we hear four-letter words, we usually think of something else, uh, but it, leave it to uh, the Bible to flip those four-letter words upside down. And So here's amen. And what it actually means is it's an agreement. It's uh, continuity. It's certainty. And actually... Um, If you were to put it into like a phrase, it would be, so be it, and so on, uh, like that. And so the reason that he says it over and over and over again is because of that meaning, so be it, and so on. And if you add the forever to it, then it's even more so because forever's meaning is for all future times, continually. Those are the two meanings that pop up the most. So if you put forever amen together, it's for all future times, so be it. Powerful words, powerful statement from the Bible, God calling out to us so long ago when Jesus was praying, and he said, you know, this is the prayer. Say it like this, our Father, and he gave this rhythm to it so that they would remember it. I told you that, uh, don't forget, you know, the Hebrew people, they didn't have uh, a Bible like we did. Uh, They did, but only, you know, the rich folks had it or those that were teaching it, mostly those that taught it because there wasn't like a lot of copies around. And so the prayer was something that they learned. They said it uh, daily. And so... They're saying this prayer, and because of the love and the affection and the honor that they put into that prayer, they came up with that doxology at the end. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, and that forever, amen. For all future times, so be it. And so when you put that ending together, then it's really something for us as the church to think about because this church, this building is not the church. The church is you, 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 each of us. Even if it's your first time here today or your first time in church, you are still the church. Why? Because there can't be church without us. When my dad uh, was first starting out in preaching, he used to do a lot of uh, evangelism kind of classes, conferences, and things. And when he would do the teachings, one thing that he would write on the board, and he wrote this for actually my confirmation class too as well, he wrote uh, CH, and then he wrote space, space, and then he wrote CH. And he asked, can any of you figure out what's missing there in the middle? And being the good little preacher's boy that I was, preacher's kid, I raised my hand and said, well, that's easy. It's you are. 
You ever think about that? Right there in the middle, you got the CH on one end. And what's the signature for CH? CH actually uh, in the Greek is X, which means Christ. So Christ on one end, Christ on the other, and you are in the middle. That is how we are to think of the church. And that's how we're to think of this prayer. So when we say forever amen, it's again one of those moments that we're signing on that dotted line and saying, God, we love you and we're going to be there for you as best we can forever. Amen. But in return, then we hear that from God and God says, for all future times continually, so be it. It's like a conversation all in just two words. And if you want to learn a little more about it, you can skip to the end then of the Bible in Revelations 21. And Revelations 21, 3 through 7, I think it's going to be up on the screen. You can pop it up there, Ethan. Thanks. And it says this, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He then said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. If you can go, Ethan, back to that first verse there, verse 3. So this is in Revelations. This is at the end. This is uh, John's vision, and this is what he sees. And this is actually only just one chapter away from the total end of the Bible. Uh, so if you've never read it all the way through, spoiler alert, uh, Christians, we win in the end. <laughs> Uh, it might not seem like it right now because the world is hard. We're living in a world that's very difficult, that's very painful. There is death. There is sadness. There is pain, all those things. And so what this verse and verses are saying is, and, and John is hearing from the throne, is I will make everything new. Now, what does that mean for you and for me? So forever, amen, remember, is that agreement, that signing on the dotted line. It's God saying, uh, so be it for all future times. This is the way it will be. And so from the throne, John's hearing, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. Because we talked about for thine is the kingdom, and we talked about in the Lord's prayer, the kingdom of heaven is here on earth. It's near that's what Scripture says. We often, when we've heard and thought about it, we thought, well, the kingdom of heaven, it's in heaven, right? Heaven is here, we're here, and never the in-between shall meet, right? But really, the kingdom of heaven is here. When you ask Jesus into your heart, and whether you have or not, Jesus is there, you just have to open the door to him. And when you ask him into your heart, then God's dwelling place is now among his people, and he will dwell with them. He will be with them. And how did he do that? Well, in old times, he sent Jesus in the person who was both God and man to be with us. And that's the part where a lot of people get lost. It gets tricky. But God did that so that we could look at the things that Jesus did and say, Jesus was somewhat like me. He knows your pain. Think about the things that happened to Jesus. From the moment that he was born, he had to travel a long distance just to get to the place where he was to be born. And he wasn't born uh, in a really nice hospital with 
you know, doctors and nurses all around. Uh, anybody in here that was not born in a hospital? Okay. I didn't think so. Because it's, uh, you know, it's hard to have that a different way. I didn't know, though, if there were any uh, water births or anything like that. Anybody different like that, that you were born that way? Okay. Well, me neither. <laughs> I was born actually in Riverside Hospital in Columbus. Uh, and that is the kind of birth that most of, most of us has had. Now, Jesus, though, he did tr all this traveling and all this way to go, and his family went to Bethlehem to be counted because that was the place of Joseph's birth. But it was also the place that had been foretold so many years ago in prophecy that he would go to a distant land. Now, it wasn't super far, but it was a place that they had to travel to. And when they arrived there, Jesus was not born. You know the Christmas story if you've ever heard it before. He was born in a manger, which is something totally different than we think it is. We often think of the manger, you know, as the little lean-to and, you know, the animals all around and uh, it has a soft light to it. If you ever went to a live nativity scene, you know, it's a, it's a real pretty thing, the angel kind of on top. We do that here even too. But actually, more than likely, it was a small little cave. It was dark. It was dank. It was the mangers were kind of cut inside the rock there near wherever the uh, houses were. This was an inn, so it was probably in stone too as well. So out back, they had the little cave, and that's where the animals were. So it was probably dark, dingy, smelly, and yucky. Not a place for a baby to be born. But that's where Jesus was born. And you don't think that he doesn't know some of what we go through? Then after that, what happened? When he was born, the king, the leader of the time, said, find all babies of a certain age, male, born on this time, and kill them. And so he sent people out for those babies to be killed. That was Jesus. Mary and Joseph then had to leave soon after that and get away because Jesus was wanted at an age where he didn't even know that he was wanted. Now, I'm at uh, home right now. Actually, I didn't even get here this morning until quarter till because I was on puppy duty at our house. We have a new little puppy. He's a black lab uh, for cowboy fans in here. My son and I named him Dallas. Uh, he's a lot of fun, but he doesn't know anything. And I keep trying to tell Jackson that. Uh, is Dallas is just like a newborn baby. He is almost 10 weeks old, which... I don't know what that equates to in baby years, but like probably a year old or something. I don't know how dog years and human years line up like that. But he doesn't know anything, so you have to teach him what to do. So if, I, if we teach him the wrong things, then he's going to do wrong things his entire life. But if you teach him the right things, then he'll be a retriever that follows you around and does everything that you want to do without causing a lot of problems because that's what labs do. And so uh, it's been interesting to relearn that. We've had quite a few dogs over the years. Our oldest one right now is 14. And it's funny, but it's not funny because she is 14. Uh, she's got bad hips. I don't know what that equates to again in human years. What is 14 times 7? Anybody good at math like that? What is it, 88? 60. No, it's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than 14 times 7? 98. 98. Thank you. That sounds better. <laughs> Good thing you don't teach math, Michael. <laughs> he teaches music, so it's okay. Uh, <laughs> but she's old, 98 years old. That's an old human being let alone I'm 14 years old, an old dog. And so uh, she's got uh, all these kind of things wrong with her, but, you know, all the puppy wants to do is kiss her, jump on her. He tries, uh, you know, dogs in their own way, try to par and hug her, all kinds of things. Now, the other day I did catch him, like, trying to eat her eyeball. That's not good. 
But my favorite thing is she can't get up that well or that fast, and so she doesn't try because she's 98 and her hips aren't that great, and she moves real slow, just like those of us as we get older in the morning. And so she'll sit there, and he'll jump all over her. And my favorite thing is when I'm in the room, she'll look at me like this. Like, you did this to me? Why did you get a puppy? But she's really good at helping the puppies learn. She's already taught him, like, to go outside, where to go, and all those things, because I don't know how all dogs do that, but that's what they do. And so here, when we read these verses, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will be with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. We can understand that from just everyday life. That God is saying, here's Jesus, here he is, born so that uh, we can see what the Son of God is and who he is, and then we can learn from the things that Jesus has gone through. And Jesus had so many things that happened to him, and so when we're going through life feeling downtrodden, feeling upset, feeling hurt, feeling pain, having death in our family, having death uh, to a friend, having work that's not going so great, all those things, Jesus knows what that is. And so when Scripture here in John says, he will wipe every tear from their eyes, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. What that really means is that God's going to make everything new. Everything that was old or in the past is gone. Now, I've shared with you before that I love movies. Uh, And one of my favorite movies I rewatched this week, and I watched it for this specific scene so that I could repeat it back to you today. And it's an old Mel Brooks movie called Spaceballs. Uh, If you like Star Wars, you should watch Spaceballs because they make fun of Star Wars, Uh, but my favorite part is uh, Rick Moranis plays this character named Dark Helmet, so instead of Darth Vader, we've got Dark Helmet, and he's got a giant black helmet like Darth Vader, only it takes up his whole body, and he can barely walk with it. It's a lot of fun, but uh, in it, there's all kinds of cracks on the fact that this is a movie, even though it's a movie and you're watching it, but it's actually them talking about the movie in it. And they even try to sell merchandise in it. It's a really good, funny old movie. But my favorite part is they're standing before the screen and they're saying, we need to find out what happened to Lone Star, who is uh, playing the Luke character, the, the Jedi. And we need to find out what happened. And they're like, well, go back into the movie to find out where that happened. And so they do that and they can't find him. So then they fast forward. And he says, stop, stop, stop. What's going on right now? Where are we? And the guy says, well, we're at now. And he's like, we're at now in the movie. And he waves his hand on the screen, and the TV shows his hand. Then he turns around, looks at the camera, and waves his hand. He's like, we're at now? And he's like, where's now? And he's like, right now, sir. And he's like, like, now where? And he's like, you just missed it. <laughs> because now is only at this moment. And if you go past it, then it's already in the past. Do you understand what they're getting at? And so my favorite part is, and he's like, now? Well, let's get to now. And he's like, we can't, sir. And he's like, why? He's like, because we just missed it. (laughs) And it just goes back and forth. Uh, And it's kind of like the Abbott and Costello, who's on first kind of a thing. But what the Bible is saying here is, is that God is going to wipe away all tears from our eyes because the past is in the past. And no matter how much it hurts, no matter how much pain and hurt there is, then Jesus says, forever, amen. Why? Because for all future times continually, here's the agreement, amen, so be it. And so it doesn't matter what's happened. It matters to us because we're human beings. And so the crying, the death, the pain, the hurt, life, the old order of things, that hurts us. 
But God says, I feel your pain, and I take it away in this new creation. And that new creation is this, this new life that will be created. All the old will pass away. And so when that moment comes, we need not be afraid of the end. We use words, in fact, like apocalypse, apocalyptic nature, the end, all these things. But God says, don't worry about it because it is the end. It is done. It's not happening. It's already done. God paid the price for that sin in Jesus, and so he says, I am the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end. You don't need to worry about the end just like you don't need to worry about the middle and the beginning because forever, amen. It's all there for us. And he closes that beautiful passage in John 21 If you go to the last part of that, Ethan, the verse 7, those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Why? Forever. Amen. It's continuity. Often life does not feel like continuity. It does not feel like it's linked together. It does not feel like it's an agreement. It feels more like it's one-sided. It feels like uh, here's this moment, but it has nothing to do with you. It only just has everything to do with your emotions and your hurt and your pain and everything. But really, God's saying, it's okay. I got it. I got it covered. But we can't feel it because we hurt from it. We're in the middle of it. And when we're in the middle of it, we're next to that hurt and pain. And God says, it's okay because I am the beginning. I am the end. And that doesn't matter. None of that matters because those who are victorious will inherit this, and I will be their God, and they will will be my children. The old will become new. Everything else will fall away. But you see, it's an agreement. And so we have to know that when we give that prayer and when we end it with, for thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever, amen, the agreement part means that we agree Okay, God, take it. Take all of that moment, and I let it go. So today, what do you have to let go? What is the hurt? What is the pain? What is maybe the tragedy? What is your job? What is your family? What is it that you're holding on to and you won't let go and you're not accepting that agreement? You're not saying forever amen. You're saying, well, God, okay, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, but I'm not going to end it because I'm going to hold on to whatever it is that I got today. And I'm not going to let it go because it hurts. And you don't know that because you're not helping me with it. And all God says again and again to you is, The same thing that Randy Travis said at the end of his song. Forever and ever, amen, 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 amen. He's all he's trying to do is get you to say it with them. And that's why the Jewish people, when they prayed that prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us, Father, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation. Whenever they prayed all that prayer, that when they came to that ending, that's why they added, for thine, for yours is the kingdom. It's not mine. It is the power, your power, not mine. It is the glory, your glory, not mine. Forever, amen. And all God's asking for you today is let go 
of your part of it. And he just wants to hear forever. Amen. I'm not sure about it. I'm scared. It still hurts. But okay, God, forever. Amen. I'll let it go. Because I know in the end, all the tears, all the hurt, all the sadness, all pain will fall away. So today I encourage you, whatever that is, let it go. There's a phrase that Christians have often said over the years, let it go, let go, and let God. Frozen tried to take that, <laughs> if you remember the song. But you, all you got to do is just let it go. And two simple words do that. And they're together because it's all about the continuous moment from all time from now and future times. Will you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we give this moment to you today. I ask, Father, that if there's anyone here this morning that's really trying to hold on to that hurt, pain, whatever it is that's going on in them that they're afraid, Father, they're afraid to let it go. May they be able this morning to rise together with one voice and say, all right, God, forever, amen. I give that to you. And we give it to you this morning, God. In all that you do, we honor you. Leading off from his sermon, um, it doesn't matter where you are in your life. It doesn't matter if you're, you're at church. It doesn't, we love to see you every week, please. But um, it doesn't matter if you're here at church. It doesn't matter if you're in a hospital. It doesn't matter if you're in your car that we would love to see you here, but that God is always on your side and that you always have a friend in him. I was driving with the windows down, music loud, lost as anyone could be. Praying that an open road would heal my soul and fill the emptiness in me. I wasn't in a church, I wasn't on my knees in prayer, but I know I heard your voice right then, right there. I met you on a Tears were in my eyes, and the dashboard was the altar where I gave you my life. Oh, the headlights were shining, there were angels all around. Oh, it still feels like holy ground when I go driving with the windows down. Every single mile I drive testifies how you turn my life around. When you called your name, everything changed. I was lost, but now I'm found. I met you on a highway. Tears were dashboard was the altar where I gave you my life. Oh, the headlights were shining. There were angels all around. But it still feels like holy ground when I go driving with the windows down. Yeah. 
So we are so glad that you are here this morning. We're going to sing one more song with you, and I'm going to invite Olivia back up on the stage. This is one of our favorite songs. It is very upbeat, so we invite you to stand with us. But remember, if you didn't get your donut today, grab one on your way out. Thanks for coming today. Will you stand with us? I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed, I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed. Trouble knocking at my door today, I ain't gonna let it in. Worry wanna steal my joy away, but I ain't gonna let it win. Cause on my best day, I'm a child of God, on my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, every day is a good day, and you're the reason why. Bless God, this heart beat in my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. And when I count the problems that I see, hope looks all but gone. But when I count the ways you're good to me, you got me counting all day long. I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed, got this heart beat in my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed, got this heart beat in my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed. Whether it's your best day, your worst day, some Tuesday, your birthday, every day's a good day. Now let me tell you why. You got air in your lungs. You got blood in your body. You are a child of God. Come on and sing it, somebody. But on my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, every day is a good day. And you're the reason why. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Got this heart beating in my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Got this heart beat in my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed. Because on my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, every day is a good day. And you're the reason. Why? On my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. Oh, every day is a good day. And you're the reason why. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. Have a great week, guys. We'll see you next time.